to the cloud. All right, welcome everyone today. Um, we have a Manufacturing Month presentation. This is a career event with Davis Tool. Um, before we get started, I have a few little housekeeping things. Um, as you are coming in, if you didn't get to see it already, we have a link to our great questions document that um, is something that you can hold on to and ask questions that you can ask anyone in your life. You can ask today of these career presenters. It's also um, great to use to talk to your family, friends, your relatives about their careers, because everybody is excited when you're actually interested enough to ask questions. So these are some great questions that you can, you can get answered um, on the back. It also has some tips and tricks and all good things for you to know how to dress for success and how to be successful communicating with people as you're going into your career. Um, the next thing I'd really like you to do is over here um, on the bottom right, there's a check-in. So if you would check in here and just confirm that way, um, your school will be able to see right away that you are in this meeting where you're supposed to be. Um, at the end of the meeting, on the far left, there's an evaluation form. That is actually the only way that we can give you credit for having attended. So check in, gives them the feeling that you're safely where you're supposed to be. Evaluation is what I need you to do to get credit. So make absolutely sure that you do that. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, we have a scholarship going on. Um, if we, yeah, one, one more thing on this slide. Um, during the manufacturing month, during October, as you're listening to these presentations and when you're doing your evaluations, you'll get notes from back, mailed back to you about what you learned in each presentation. So hold on to those because those would be a great place to start with a scholarship application. And um, during the month of October for manufacturing month, School to Career is offering $500 scholarships. We have five scholarships for high school students, five for high school teachers, and two for middle school teachers. So if there is a use that you could have for $500, what we want to know in this scholarship application is basically what you learned during manufacturing month, where you might see yourself in manufacturing in the future, or even just how you do STEM in your own life. And this scholarship is kind of great. It can be applied to, you know, from a freshman year through a senior year. It does not have to go toward college tuition. It can be used for training. It can be used to buy tools. If um, you love to work on cars or love woodworking, those are STEM, that's manufacturing. Tell us how, you know, a new sewing machine would be a great asset for you as you build your career as a maker and, and you know, explore your own interests. So, and of course it can be used for training later if you wanna do that as well. So anyway, um, that's a good thing that we have going on. Those scholarship applications are due on November 5th. Okay, now we can go to the next slide. So while you're here, we would appreciate it if you'll be fully present, paying attention, asking questions. These folks will be absolutely thrilled to hear what you would like to know about Davis Tool. So be sure that you're engaged. And then again, at the very end, please, please turn in your evaluation. Okay, so that's all that I have on my end for housekeeping. Um, so we'll go ahead and turn it over now to Jenny Bullard from Davis Tool, and I'll let you introduce everyone else. Thank you so much for being here today. We appreciate you. Thank you, Heather. Uh, so we have here today Alton Crosser, who is our one of our manufacturing managers. We have Doug Paws, who is one of our buyers, and then Elizabeth Van Horn, who is one of our accountants. And then I, of course, am in recruiting and HR. So um, we will start with Alton. He's going to tell us a little bit about working in the manufacturing directly in production. Everybody hear me okay? Welcome to Davis Tool. Uh, first of all, I'll tell you a little bit about our company. Um, Jenny will correct me. We are about 160 people. And we in this building, we have 200,000 square feet manufacturing. Across town, we have a plating facility that is uh, also ours that does many of our surface finishes on our parts and things. 
And then uh, my job, my name's Alton Crosser. I'm a department manager. And so I have a crew working for me. And I also have managers working for me also. Uh, my, our main, my main job is to manage uh, the machine shop. So we have two departments mainly in this building. We have a sheet metal side and we have a machine shop side. And so on the machine shop side, we're daily running a uh, large amount of uh, CNC machines and uh, also manual mills and hand working and, and uh, inspection going on. We have CMM, which is core major machines, which help inspect parts. And so my daily job is pretty much manufacturing and uh, I, I work with scheduling. Uh, each day we have scheduling meetings and then I also work on the floor teaching, training. Uh, sometimes I'm actually helping them solve problems. Uh, we did that today. We had a meeting of trying to solve a problem and I could share that with you a little later uh, on, on a part. And so that's my kind of my daily routine. Um, what part you want to jump right into? Where's your moderator? You want to jump right into problem solving or which area did you want to cover? Um, Heather? Go. Yes. Um, you know, whatever you feel like you need to share to give the students the best experience. And, you know, what do you do on a daily basis that they would be excited to hear about? You know, any kind of information you have that can give them a better feeling for why they would want to be at Davis Tool or what you make. It's all we can exciting. Talk about a little bit about what we make. Um, our smallest parts, uh, I remember some brass parts that we have made that we were actually working on under a microscope. They were very, very small, very intricate. And then our largest part uh, is actually a refitted cargo ship container. So we, it's in our building. We, we, we had it inside the building. And uh, we put it in, what it turned out to be was one giant computer uh, that was mobile. That's the largest product we make. Um, we make anything, we're a job shop. So we make anything people ask us to make. We look at it, we evaluate it. We say, well, uh, that fits our, our manufacturing um, envelope that we can do. And then we quote it and then we figure out how we're going to uh, build it. So that starts with quoting and then timetables. Some timetables are quite quick. We could do in a couple of days from start to finish. Other ones take years. Some of the aerospace to get, get the materials takes many years to get done. So uh, it's a, such a variety. That's one thing I like a lot about this, this company is just the enormous amount of variety and challenges that you face. Uh, we will, uh, one day you're working with some small plastic part and another day you might have some 1200 pounds of titanium to deal with. So, and then the scheduling and getting new machines, new technology, studying technology. Um, some of the questions that uh, they prepared for me is uh, I've also helped a lot with one of the projects I was on is we went to Chicago and we went to a tool show fair. Now this thing's million plus square feet. And we actually purchased a machine through that. It's a five axis machine. And so, and then along with that, that, that project of getting that machine in here, we had to balance it. We bought a balancer and then we actually tap test. This is a, uh, a system of actually hooking probes to a, a tool and finding out what speed we should be cutting. So it was a very in-depth, took a lot of months to get this machine in here. That's a kind of a project that we work on and uh, we find solutions that way. Any questions, anytime you want. Well, I'm kind of curious how you got started um, you know, how did you find Davis Tool, or what was your your path into this job? Um, I tried to get some younger people involved here. I've been machining about almost forty years, and uh, so I was actually in manufacturing, 
just running machines, uh, making parts. And then I got a chance to be a plant electrician. And then as a plant electrician, I was also help uh, building machine. And I, I kind of found that the machining side of it was much more intriguing than being an electrician. Both of those are fantastic things to do. So I went down the road of machining and I was, I'm a tool maker. So a tool maker is a very specialized person that is able to do enormous variety of things on uh, building tooling. And then when I came here, I was building tooling, running machines, and I, I uh, worked into, in a short amount of time, into management. And so I, I uh, ran the swing shift here for eight, nine years. And I also, now I've been on days for almost about the same amount of time. Uh, managing and problem solving and helping people. Uh, my, one of the questions I saw was one of the favorite things that I like about this job and about my career is um, being able to give people skills. So people not just keep myself, but to actually get people trained that they could do something for the rest of their lives with. They develop skills that they know how to do this. They know how to tap a hole. They know how to, uh, how to, do precision grinding or run a CNC or program. I've had several engineers work for me. Um, one of them all the way through high school, all the way to college. And now he's one of our main engineers here. So this has been a fantastic journey, seeing people being able to progress and learn. Uh, I just had another engineer just start. He has his degree and he wanted to get real experience on the floor uh, in a machine shop rather than just going straight into engineering. So that's kind of my favorite thing. And that's what drew me into this is um, I just like the physical aspect of the metal. Um, that's what I've worked with mostly. And it's really, it's intriguing how to see uh, something start off. We've had blocks of metal in here at almost two tons about 3,800 pounds of steel. And then we whittle it down because of the shape of it. Believe it or not, when it was done, I, I could just pick it up. It was just that we machined all these ribs and things. And that was, that's about 500 hours apart. So those are, those are challenging jobs, but we get them done. So that's kind of my favorite thing. And that's what I do mostly here. I have programmed uh, CNCs that I was, and I've also worked in engineering uh, with engineers. I've traveled with engineers to various places to check on how parts, we have a lot of vendors. So we don't do everything ourselves. We send things out to uh, specialized vendors that uh, do things for us. And sometimes we deem it necessary to bring it in-house. So we will actually buy the equipment to, uh, do what our vendors used to do because it shortens our turnaround time and we could also monitor it better. We have bought machines just to build a certain part because of the demand, how unique it is that we've done that. Uh, Alton, Grant uh, wrote in chat, what are the options of coming back to run the A55 after school or on weekends during the school year? <laughs> Hi, Grant. Uh, yeah, that's a really good, that's a really good chance of doing that. You just call Jenny there and she'll hook you up. Go yeah, out let's, let's, let's talk later, Grant. Yeah, so that's <laughs> awesome. Grant has had an internship with Davis Tool already over the summer. Um, so yeah, that's, that's something else that I hope you'll talk about in a sec. Um, I do see another question in the chat. How often do you hire for entry-level positions and how would someone apply? Go ahead, Jenny. <laughs> so we are almost always hiring for entry-level positions and we have multiple entry-level positions right now. Uh, the best way to apply is to go to our website and that's uh, www.davistl.com. And then the careers tab is forward slash jobs. And I will type that into the chat here. Um, and then feel free to um, give me a call or send me an email if you have any questions. And I'm going to put my phone number and my email in the chat here as well. All right, Alton, back to you. 
Any other questions at this time? So uh, problem solving, that's a challenge. We actually have a fixture meeting and we call it that. And uh, it's amazing how many years experience is actually in that meeting. But uh, people, we will have up to 10, 12 people in, in, now we're doing it on Zoom. I like doing the Zoom meetings for fixtures because we can pull up prints and diagrams and, and you could actually sketch on the prints. And so I, I find that uh, very valuable. And uh, today we had a, we were trying to figure out how to get a very small flange on a big part. Right now they're putting it on by hand and it was not, it's not very optimal. They're using a little hand grinder. And so that was an interesting problem solving. So um, one of the ideas was to mill it in a machine, but the, the cutter would be up to very, very small and, and very long. And we, we thought that was quite difficult. Another one was to uh, form it in the punch. A lot of our parts go through multiple stages. Uh, we could start off with raw material and then it'll go through a laser or a punch and then we'll, we might machine it, we'll, we'll bend it. Uh, it'll get surface finishes on it. It'll get painted, it'll get hardware put in it. So sometimes it's, there's many, many steps, but this one step of this flange, uh, the other one was to make a jig for it and, and mount a router and cut that little part. And then finally, one of the options was to uh, make a better jig to help the guys that are putting it on by hand so that they can form it better because it's, it's not, it's very tight tolerance. And it was kind of an awkward little small, but that was one of the things, many things I do. And I find that one of the most enjoyable of being able to actually dig in there and figure out how to get something done using experience and the amount of experience in the room. So we have uh, high level engineers, we have people on the floor, we have managers that come into this meeting programmers and we all figure out how we're gonna get something done. Anything else? Questions? I don't see anything else in the chat right this minute, but maybe we can move on to another presenter and then come back and have questions for everyone at the end too. It might be that questions pop up as we're rolling along. So thank you. All right. Um, so Doug is one of our buyers. He uh, does purchasing and uh, I'll have him talk to you next about what he does here. Hi, everybody. I'm Doug in purchasing. I'll try to make mine sound as exciting as Alton's. But purchasing is kind of the we're behind the scenes, kind of just trying to make sure things are here when Alton needs them to actually produce the product. Um, so my my main job here uh, they fill out requisitions for what they need they get it approved by their department manager aka alton and then that comes up to our department and then we go ahead and source that out to various vendors um, trying to get obviously the best deal and get it here when we need it um, that can be very challenging um, especially currently because supply chain is just a mess right now to put it <laughs> bluntly um so um yeah so that's quite a bit of the job there the other portion that i do um alton mentioned that we we do have our own finishing plant but we don't have capacity for all the parts that we're doing so we do still outsource a lot of our um, plating and surface finishing to other vendors and that is quite challenging there's not that many options in the area and they tend to all be busy at the same time. So a lot of my day is spent begging people to get our stuff done. And uh, <laughs> luckily it's going well lately, um, but that would probably be the majority of my days lately, um, which kind of leads into the problems that we have here, which is just capacity. Um, it's a good problem to have. We have more business than we can handle. Um, so we are currently trying to increase our capacity. Jenny's hiring people every day. Um, and I'm trying to find more outside vendors that can do more plating for us and, uh, and keep the operation moving. So it's, that's, and it's not just me. There's four of us here in the purchasing department 
all of us are out here trying to um, keep things moving. We also are in charge of the office supplies as well for all those nice binders you see behind Jenny. Um, what else is exciting here? Um, it is it is a fun position because you do get to you get to talk to every department. Somehow purchasing has its hand in everything. So it's it's an interesting position to be in, um, especially this is an entry level position here. So I'm learning a lot about manufacturing while I'm here, but I also work with accounting quite a bit on the purchasing issues. I work with Alton on getting his next day tooling for the job that needs to be done, you know, that day, sometimes the same day delivery if we can make it happen. Um, so it is, yeah, it can be challenging on days, but it's rewarding when you figure the problem out and we get the product out on time. Doug, um, Danny Van Voris, I apologize if I didn't say that correctly, um, has a question for you. What is your education background that led to this position? I did supply and logistics management at Portland State. Um, so it kind of led me to this general position of tracking things down and building processes, making things more efficient. And um, yeah, that fits right in here, which is nice. Thanks for the question. Um, so I'm kind of wondering, um, it seems like you have a really collaborative relationship with a lot of the other companies in the area. Mm -hmm. um, how, how does that work? Do you, you get things supplied from them? Do you also supply parts to other manufacturers? Yes, <laughs> to put it shortly, I'm still, uh, still learning all the connections. Um, there's been it's a tight knit industry. It seems like every finishing plant kind of knows each other already and they have history. Um, so I'm trying to figure out where we all fit in together, but for the most part, um, yes, it is just asking around and talking to all these different suppliers and seeing how they can help us and what their capabilities are on any given day. So it can be every, every day is new if you're looking for something exciting. Never know what problems will arise. Sorry if that was too short. <laughs> That's okay. We have, yeah, we have lots of uh, different different questions, and you know, people from a lot of students are here from a lot of different backgrounds. Mm -hmm. So it's great to see all of the aspects of manufacturing, because I think it's it's a great industry in that people from all over, you know, accounting, business, all sorts of folks are necessary and, and finding really exciting careers here. Um, so Jenny, I actually have, I don't know, I'm assuming it's a question for you in HR. Um, how long do people stay at Davis Tool usually? Uh, well, that's a good question. Um, there, it's a, it, it varies widely. We have people who have been here 30 years we have people who come in into an entry level position, get going in it and decide that manufacturing isn't for them and they, they leave quickly. Um, we have quite a few people who have been here 10, 15, 20 years. Um, I myself am coming up on three years. Um, and then, you know, Alton has been here for a long time. Um, and then Liz is coming up, I think on two years, Liz, two years, yeah. So, uh, you know, it, it varies. Um, a lot of people stay for a while, which is good. Yep. All right. Um, is Elizabeth going next or are you next, Jenny? Uh, let's let Liz go next. <laughs> okay. I think you can hear me now. Okay, so I'm an accountant. Um, at Davis Tool, we have a team of accountants. Um, we have a total of three. I'm an account cable specialist. So if you're not sure how that breaks down, or if you're just, I think accountants just fit a certain theme, I am not your traditional accountant. A lot of people think accountants are CPAs, which are a great career field if you want to go into it. I am not. I am an accountant cable specialist. So 
let's say Alton's going to make some product. He's going to talk to Doug. Doug's going to buy the product. And ultimately, we need to pay our suppliers. So I see the invoices. So my usual day, I come in the office. I print some invoices. I, I review them. Um, when I'm in the middle of reviewing, I'm going to make sure that uh, we actually receive them, that all the products are fine. There are some actual really fascinating things we buy from suppliers, but we're going to make sure that they meet our standards before we put them onto uh, the items we're producing. So I'll check with our staff to make sure, hey, are we good to pay this item? They give me the green light. I'll enter it into our inventory system, and then I put it into our accounting system, and then I issue checks or wires. Uh, it sounds really simplified, but it's actually kind of interesting. Sometimes it's fun to see, you know, hey, did this part come in correctly? Uh, where is this part? Or is this part got split in multiple ways? Uh, kudos to Doug. Um, I know with the supply chain being really interesting right now, he gets really creative. He doesn't tell you how much problem solving he does, but he is good at finding things. He is excellent at what he does. Uh, so Thank sometimes you. for me, that means I, I get a couple different invoices and it's kind of like the, the matching game. Um, so I enjoy it. Um, I used to work in banking, so any day I can show up in a short and jeans is great for me. Um, I don't have to do sales. Certainly didn't like the pressure of sales and some of the other jobs I have, so I really enjoyed being here. Some of the things I've enjoyed about switching to manufacturing and being an accountant in manufacturing is seeing all the fascinating things that are here. Um, I love walking on the shop floor and seeing what parts we're making, just like Alton said. Sometimes it's really fascinating to see that, hey, I saw this invoice for the sheet metal. I can see it go through facility and leave a final product that I never could have thought we could make. And it's, it's amazing to me. I'm an accountant, not a machinist, but it's truly amazing what they make downstairs. Um, and then sometimes it's really fascinating to crunch numbers. I was someone that I love Excel. Always want to see you know, how, how close can I get this or how many discounts can I take to reduce this cost for my company? And it's always kind of fun to see, you know, what ways can I depreciate this, this asset to save us? How can we be more profitable? So it's always kind of an ongoing game to see how well can I improve our numbers? Where can I look for cost reductions? Um, so it's kind of fascinating that way. Um, I certainly want to say that one of the things I've learned here is that you don't have to be the traditional college path to be able to provide for your family. Um, I see some really deeply intelligent, really well-educated uh, well people downstairs who are excellent in their fields. So don't think if you're someone sitting in high school and saying four years of traditional college might not be my, my set, certainly feel that there's jobs in manufacturing for you that provide very well. That was something I learned that even though I'm, I'm not downstairs producing things, that, you know, there's some really rewarding jobs in manufacturing. Um, other than that, um, I did learn a lot of things about some of the machinery. Um, I got to sit with our maintenance crew as they were explaining what some of the machinery does. And I asked them, I can see this invoice, but they explained to me as the count, what are we paying for here? Or what service are we doing here? And it kind of really lined my world. Any questions? I don't know, I think I hit a lot of things there. Yep, and I, I think it's interesting that, you know, that's another STEM field. If you think about it, if people are, are interested in science, technology, engineering, math, math and accounting go hand in hand. So that's, that's a whole, whole nother way to do STEM. So yeah, thank you. Jenny, if you're ready, um, I think it would be great to talk about entry-level positions and yeah. how um, people grow within Davis Tool and maybe just touch on the internships a little bit as well. Yeah, absolutely. So um, we have, like I said earlier, we have several entry-level positions right now. We have entry-level in our finishing plating department. We have entry-level maintenance right now, entry-level machinist, entry-level production assembler, entry-level quality assurance specialist. Um, so we have quite a few entry level positions right now that we are hiring for. Um, and, you know, I put the website on the board. If you want information about any of those, feel free to go check out that website. All of the job descriptions are listed there. Um, and that is the best way to apply, as we said earlier. Um, as uh, Grant knows, uh, we have internships. So um, every summer we have interns that come and work at Davis Tool. Um, and we really try to give our interns the broadest experience possible. Um, you know, we don't just have them filing paperwork. We have them running the machines. We have them um, like, you know, I had an intern last summer and he was helping me recruit candidates. We really try to engage them in the meat of what we do here so that they can get a real feel for what a job would be like here at Davis Tool. And I think that 
that we do a pretty good job because most of our interns really want to come back and we get some that return year after year. We actually have an engineer working in our engineering department right now who worked here for seven summers going through school and now he's an engineer here. So I think that that speaks really well to their experiences as their interns here. Obviously, they enjoy it and it makes them feel like Davis Tool is a good place to come and work. So absolutely. Um, what was the last part that you wanted me to address, Heather? I apologize. Oh, if you talk a little bit about um, mobility within Davis oh, Tool, yeah. career paths and how they can grow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we like to um, hire into what we call our leadership pipeline. Um, so we like, we prefer to promote from within. Um, it's really true, like a lot of companies say that, but we really prefer to promote people who know Davis Tool, know how we work, know our processes. It just makes things uh, simpler for us and we feel like they're more invested in Davis Tool and its employees. Um, so anybody coming into any entry-level position has a career path up into management. Um, and if that's something that interests you, I would recommend applying and, you know, talk to the interviewers right out of the gate. Hey, I'm interested in doing leadership. You know, how can I be involved with that? How can I move into that pipeline? And um, we do career pathing here. So, you know, if you talk to your manager about, hey, I want to move up, what do I need to do? we will be very open with you about these are the things that you need to learn to move on to the next stage. If you want to go here, then these are the things that we recommend to you. Um, and we do actually um, encourage people to go where they want to go. So, you know, if we have somebody who's one, working in one department, they feel like they might be happier in another department, those managers will talk and see if we can create a career path um, and a plan to make that happen. It might not be immediate, depending on the skills needed for the new position or just availability of like if that department is already full. But we do like to, you know, create a plan where we can find, make people as satisfied in their work as they can be. So. That's great. Um, when people are coming in for an entry level job or for an internship, what's the most important thing that that a new employee can kind of bring to the interview, bring to the table to get your interest? So we do our interviews a little different. I, I guess some, a lot of companies are doing this now, but we do a behavioral interview rather than um, a skills interview. So when you're coming in, yes, we do want to know that you have some rudimentary skills that we can work with, but we also want to know, are you going to be a good employee? Like, are you going to show up on time? Are you going to be um, reliable? Um, and are you going to be eager to learn and grow? We want to learn, have people that are wanting to grow themselves, not just coming in and doing one thing. You know, because we have such a variety of jobs, we need people who are willing to expand their knowledge base. Um, you're not going to be on an assembly line doing the same thing day after day. That is not what we do here. So people need to be ready for a challenge. They need and ready to tackle that. All right, I see a question in the chat. What do you wish you knew, but you didn't when you first contemplated this career? And that's for any of you. Alton, why don't you take that one? Um, so way back when I was, I say that back in schooling, uh, one thing they didn't have very good was placement. I hope I, I see today, being involved in something like this, I see that the placement is a lot more um, ongoing and it's a lot more tuned to actually figure out what skills you have. But being able to, uh, one thing is to work on what you're good at. I mean, it, sometimes that's hard to find out. And so I wish, you know, I started in machining when I was about 24. It would have been nice to know that I had certain skills that actually set me aside in machining that I didn't know about. And so these, uh, the uh, eye hand coordination and the spatial awareness, I have spatial, I see shapes and distances so I could put together very complex things in my mind and actually see 
I, numbers, no, but shapes. So I didn't know I had these skills. So one thing I wish is that I would have known that, uh, known those things. I did take a lot of math. I did take a lot of science in high school. I have not gone to much college, uh, but when I was in high school, I took everything I could. So, you know, I did have seven uh, full years, took two classes at a time of science. I had uh, math every year. And so that's one thing I did. So that's something I'm glad I did do, um, which I would have done is, I wish I would have known that, been able to figure out uh, the skills I had so that I didn't know were there. Uh, I could add. Um, just on there that I know it sounds strange when I was younger, it's easy to get uh, side jobs like our restaurants and hostessing and things like that. I would encourage everyone, you would be unmeasurably happier looking for an internship. It actually builds your skills and you get opportunities and things that you really want to do. Not only does it look better on your resume later on, but you can try a lot of different fields. And that's something that I wish I would have expanded more when I was in high school. Um, I didn't do an internship until I was in college. Loved it. It was a great experience. And that was worth more in the skills I learned and actually got paid more than some of the side jobs I found in restaurants and working on weekends. So if you're young, don't feel like just because you're under 18 or just at that 18 window, start applying for internships. They pay just as well as those, those other jobs and you get better hours. So. Any other questions for us? Oh. Uh, what is the typical day at work? Um, Alton, I'll let you answer that one on regarding the manufacturing side. So we actually have three shifts. So when the machinists come in, I'll talk about our machinists. When they come in, uh, there is a lot, there's already a shift here. It's a smaller shift, but what they're doing is they're tying in with the other shift. So that brings up the enormous need for communi clear communication. So one of the skills we really look for is, and we actually see in your review, when we talk about how you're progressing, is your ability to communicate. So that you should communicate with the other ship, how things are going, uh, what's next, uh, is the job just starting, is it further along? And so many times you are running parts or you're setting up a machine. Sometimes you are, this is just the production side. Uh, you might be, um, starting a brand new job, building a fixture. We have guys that are very highly skilled people that are actually building the fixtures as they go. And so these, these are the things that uh, we come into each day. Doug, do you wanna talk about your typical day at work also? Sure, sure, yeah, we kinda went over it a little bit earlier, but um, yeah, typical, I mean, the days, it changes every day. I come in with an email and I'll have, 10 jobs that all need to go somewhere. And I put those into the system, figure out what the process is, find out which vendor can do it the best for the best price and get it to them. And then continue continually communicate with them to make sure it gets back on time. And then a big chunk of my day is also meetings, telling everybody else that everything is on time and everything will be ready and uh, make sure that things are um, going smoothly trying to identify, you know, potential failure points and uh, just communicating that with all the departments, um, trying to get ahead of problems with invoicing. So to make accounting's life easier and uh, trying to, um, yeah, basically try to make things run smoothly and, uh, and avoid problems. So every, every day is gonna be a little bit different, um, which keeps it, keeps it exciting. And then Fridays we get donuts. It's pretty nice. This is true. Every Friday we have donuts. Apparently we used to do a birthday thing uh, every Friday and then we realized it was every Friday because we have so many employees. So now we just do donuts every Friday. You are allowed to eat them whether or not it's your birthday, FYI. <laughs> All right, so I see another question. Um, what high school or college classes have you found to be the most important for your occupation? I'll try that one. Um, so 
when you're in high school, you, you go to all these classes and uh, you don't realize my, my job for all the years I've been in this is it's an enormous amount of geometry. So um, I've done trig geometry last few days. So that's one thing is it's amazing how uh, much that math really matters. So uh, that is important. Um, Pythagorean, it's on our task. Just can you do the Pythagorean A squared plus B squared equals C squared and then going down further than that. We actually teach classes here. That's something I do want to touch on. We actually hold classes. I've taught classes. Enormous amount of the uh, higher level machinists and managers also teach classes on multiple things. And uh, we've had, had uh, math classes here, how to do more complex geometry questions. And so um, the, uh, the other thing is, it's kind of interesting, but just the, uh, um, the communication, the math classes, and then anything you could do uh, mechanically. We'd look at that, uh, you, you know, a lot of times, okay, oh, I didn't do any machining, but I took, you know, some classes, uh, cheap metal class in, in school and or I worked on cars or uh, I helped all these things. I helped my uh, grandpa in, in his machine shop. All these things really do uh, add up. And then of course there's the computer skills. So we, we're all deeply, these CNCs out here are deeply into computers, people programming them, all that kind of stuff. So your computer skills, your math skills, and then you're just really, your ability to uh, pay attention and to follow directions and, and catch on to details quickly. In courses, uh, we have quite a few people that go through the machining courses around town. Clockus, uh, I know Clockamus has them, Clockamus Community College, uh, PCC has them, and uh, also one way over there, uh, Mount, this is one way over in Gresham also has Mount Hood courses. Community College. Mount Hood Community yeah. College. Uh, we've had all of these actually have people work here that have been through their courses or some of their courses. And so uh, any of your computer drafting courses is a big help. All of these help your, your understanding and your spatial awareness and also being able to see things and understanding of what, what you're going to be up against. All right. I love this last question that came in. What is one of the coolest things you've made? Oop, Alton, you're muted. No, I was talking to myself a lot. Cool, coolest thing we've made. Uh, we, we, we do watch carefully. We do have uh, security here. So when we describe things, we're doing it in a very uh, vague thing. Um, coolest thing. Oh, I, I kind of like the, the giant blocks when they get all whittled down to something small to realize that, you know, they start off that big raw chunk of metal. Uh, the coolest thing I've done, probably uh, one of them is being able to, uh, like I said, to, to travel and, and purchase machines, see them installed and then see them run, get a chance to run those. That's really cool. Some of these machines, uh, they're very large and some of them are extremely fast. Um, that the one I was talking about, they, it actually spins at 33,000 RPMs. It has to be balanced. It's, it's enclosed because of the speed and uh, it puts out an enormous amount of chip. So I think seeing these parts being made and then also running these new machines. All right. Well, I think we are about out of time. Um, I'm going to give just a second um, to see if any, if anybody has any questions to pop into the chat, now is your moment. Um, but I want to say before we go, just thank you so much for being such a great partner. Um, School to Career has been really happy and, and lucky to be able to work with you guys and help with internships. And I love that you have that opportunity for students because I think a lot of these high school students would love to have the chance to see your your workplace and I can tell Grant had fun 
So <laughs> I've heard good things about the summer internships. Good, good to know. Um, yeah, and if anyone is interested in our internship next year, or even if they're interested in doing an internship during the school year, they can feel free to reach out to me and we can see what we have available. So Terrific. Okay. Well, one more reminder, if you would like to receive credit for attending today, or if you're watching the video later, and you want to receive credit for having watched the video, both do it the same way you need to go to our evaluation form, which is at bit.ly slash STC eval 2122. So thank you so much for being here. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the recording. Um, students, if you would like to, once the recording is off, shoot a thank you or um, turn on your camera or your microphone and say goodbye and thanks, we would appreciate it. Um, thank you all for being here. Thank you. Thanks, Beth.